Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and this is a part 7 of the Platform Beginner series. In this episode, I want to show you that you can implement a lot of this asset pack by yourself. We are going to be doing the sword for the player and after this episode, the part 8 will be all about sound effects, the part 9 will be all about UI and then from part 10 onwards, we are going to be rushing through the asset pack to wrap up this series. All right, let's get started. First, let's move the player back a little bit so we can make space to put the sword on the ground. Let's add a area to the node. Let's bring it down. And let's add an animated sprite for the area to the also don't forget to group the nodes for the animated sprite you already know how this works let's create the sprite frames let's use a default for this one let's set the auto play set the frame rate and under the cotton claw nodes under sprites we have sword and then we have sword idol. You can select all of these frames and drag and drop it here. Let's create a collision for our area 2D. Let's make this a rectangle shape. And right up about here it seems right. Let's set the collision layer and mask for this one. We already know how this works. It is basically the same as the other collectibles. We don't want a layer, we just need the mask so we can interact with the player. Then let's create a script for the sword. We're gonna put it in the scripts under collectibles. Let's drag and drop this right here. Let's rename the area to the for sword. Let's open the script. Let's change so it extends from area to D. And now let's connect the body enter signal. To the sword say on body entered we can change this to on player entered we can replace body with player just to be clear we know that this body will be the player and whenever the player so whenever the player enters the area of the sword there are two things we want to do first we want to set the sword as true for the player and then we want to kill free. So we remove the sword from the, the scene. Let's reset the transform for the sword. Let's drag and drop this into the scenes under collectibles. Let's save it. And now we can move it around. Let's place it back here. We can enable this so we so we are consistent with the placement. And now if we hit play now, we should get an error because we are trying to set a property for the player that doesn't exist. And there we go. There is no sword property in the player and that's okay we didn't set it yet let's go ahead and before we start setting this the property for the player let's create the sword animations for the player we go to the animated sprite 
for the player under the sprite frames we have all of these animations and if you check here on the captain clown nose you can see that we have idol holding a sword we have fall and we have run jump and all of this let's then create one animation for each of these states that we have and let's add underscore sword at the end of it let's start with the fall let's create a new animation call it fall underscore sword set the right frame rate the fall doesn't loop as you can see here let's go under the fall and add it here let's do the same thing for the idle Same thing for the jump. And same thing for the run. And now we have all of these animations and that's just perfect. Now heading back to the player, let's add the property that we just called. This is going to be a boolean and it's going to be false by default. Then we want to define and get the setter for this and for the get let's just return the value and for the setter we're gonna do something a bit different here. First thing that I want to do here is I want to check if the sword is equal to the valent. And if it is, let's just return. Because right now we're going to be doing some logic here so we can swap the animation that we're playing with the sword animation when the player picks up the sword. And I don't want to trigger this if we accidentally set it to the same value, let's say true, true, because we are going to be doing some string concatenations and replacements right here, and this can be a bit dangerous. So it's just better to return if the values are the same. Now, let's get the current animation that we are playing. We can do this by defining a variable, and let's call it current animation. And this is going to be sprite.animation. let's create another variable and let's call this one target animation and let's assign the current animation value to it and then let's define the target animation how it should be so if you have a value that means that we said that we have the sword we want the target animation to have at the end of it the word sword as we did for all the animations here otherwise it means that we have the sword and we remove the sword from the player so we might be just here at the run sword and we want to roll back to the run animation and for doing this we can say that animation equals start animation dot replace and then we can say underscore sword and we're going to replace this by empty string so this in theory if we have idle sword as the current animation playing when we perform this action it will replace it by only idle and now the final touch we're going to do if sprite at sprite frames and if you go and check here sprite frames under the animated sprite this is the animations that we create right here if you go here we can see that we have a property called sprite frames and this is a resource that we 
then create animations. And here we have this nice function called has animation that will tell us if an animation exists. Now let's head back here and say has animation. So if the sprite sprite frames has the animation and let's say target animation, we're going to change the animation that we're playing. We can say sprite that play target animation. However, there is a small problem here and it's almost invisible, but let me show you real quick. We have a bunch of different frames and let's say, for example, we're running when we pick up the sword. If we just say play and play this new animation, what can happen is we are on this frame right here and then we set back the frame to be this one, but with the run sword. And this can be okay for this project, but it can also be very awkward because it can give the sensation that the game just lagged. We can fix this if we go to this animated sprite right here. It says that we have frame and frame progress. And if we go to the methods, there is set frame and frame progress. And here has a very useful example when you can change an animation, keeping the frame index and progress. This is exactly what we want to do. So we're going to do more or less what is here. Let's head back to the player. And let's create two variables here. One is the progress. And you can say sprite but frame progress. And the other one is the frame. You can say sprite.frame. And after we set the play, we can say sprite.set frame and progress. Then we press a frame and we press a progress. This should be all that we really need to pick up the sword. If you hit play now and we run over the sword. You can see that we start carrying the sword. However, when we change states, we no longer have the sword. And that's because when we change states right here in the finite state machines, we're just calling play idle. And we're not checking if you have the sword. And we do this for all the states. We can easily fix this by going here in the play function and since all the states call this function to play the animation. We can just fix it here and it should be applied to all states. Let's go ahead and make a small check here. We are always be passing the name without the sword. And then we're going to check if object.sword. It means that we are holding the sword. And we can go ahead the same process we did here for the player. Sprite frames has animation and then we have an animation. Let me copy this. Let's head back and say object. A sprite sprite frames that has animation and we can say animation plus sword. sword. If that's the case, we're going to change the animation to match it. And then you're going to play this new animation. And by hitting play now, when you pick up the sword and we change state, we're still not carrying the sword over. And that is because if you go back here to the player, you can see that we forgot to set the value to the sword. So let's set sword equals value right here. And now, if you hit play again, now we hold the sword and we can jump and do all the things that we were doing before with the sword in hand. And that's really it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys on the next one. Bye.